Howdy y'all! Hope you're doing well on this beautiful day, wherever and whenever this video finds you. Thanks for tuning in again and hanging out with me, letting me earn you smashing that subscribe button. So, did you know that niches could have niches? Because I'll let you in on a dirty little secret. So even though you may think of me as a closure developer, I've actually spent most of my time as a closure script developer. What is closure script, you ask? Well, that's why you're here today. So what the hell is closure script? Well, it allows back end developers to fly free on the front end because it's an implementation of Clojure, but it compiles to JavaScript. So we're talking the same community, the same syntax, the same functions, that same Clojure code that you know and love, but it compiles to JavaScript. Well, why would you ever want or need another implementation of JavaScript? <laughs> Seriously, y'all need to get the heck out of here. I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. No, I need a specialized type of masochism. Have you ever done JavaScript? Well, I haven't. And that's because I know Clojure Script. <laughs> All right, jokes aside, I find that writing Clojure Script is just more fun than writing JavaScript. Like, not that I've written much JavaScript, but it just seems really clunky. Lots of semicolons and commas everywhere. I just, I prefer my huggy boys. And you end up writing way less lines of code, and the code that comes out is already highly optimized JavaScript. So for me, knowing Clojure, it was kind of a no-brainer. So what does Clojure script offer us? So numero uno, hot reloading. So the browser reloads every time the code that is written is saved. So there are a couple different tools that do this. One of them is FigWheel, one of them is Shadow CLJS. It kind of used to be FigWheel was the only game in town, but now that Shadow's on the scene, I think a lot of the community has moved towards that. Um, personally, I'm all in on it. I find it easier to use. It has a really great supportive ac active ecosystem. Thomas Heller is very available and responsive. You can find him on Slack. It also has extensive documentation that I have spent a lot of time digging through. So the fact that I haven't given up means that I guess the documentation works, right? Many people just generally find Shadow easier to use. It's also easier to understand and configure. It uses its own standalone NPM module and it doesn't require a whole line again or a project CLJ. Instead, you can have Shadow CLJS Eden, or you could even put depths in there. I mean, Shadow even lets you do line again if you want, but these are all configurable. You can do them yourself. Um, to me, this illustrates a really awesome trend that I've seen emerge of these tools that are a lot leaner and a lot more extensible without necessarily being more complex. So it, it kind of reminds me of, of depths is a really great example. Um, so it used to be that most people just use line again as a build tool, but line gives you all, all like, it gives the whole kitchen sink. And sometimes you don't need the whole kitchen sink or you don't want the whole kitchen sink. And depths is now the, I'm pretty sure it's the officially supported build tool depths with uh, CLI tools, but depths is really awesome to manage your dependencies. Um, anyway, both Shadow and Depths achieve this higher level of customization without having to have as many layers and with fewer, with less complexity. So anytime you get more for less, it's one in my book. So another advantage is leaner syntax. And if you're a web developer, you probably already have a budding RSI from all of those developer tools. I know I do. The other cool thing that comes bundled with it is a Google Clojure compiler you can actually use. Since the, since the CLJS compiler already outputs JavaScript that's already optimized, Google Clojure works great, great, just straight out of the box. 
So you get free dead code elimination and you don't even have to think about it. A lot of JavaScript devs, from my understanding, don't use that particular feature because it, uh, it would affect the way that they would have to write their code and that's a pain in the butt. But nope, you just get that for free with Clojure Script. Cool. But just like with Clojure, if you get scared, don't worry. You can always use your interop or you can even nest your interop in a separate little library and keep it all over there. You know, whatever, whatever you want to do with your interop, your interop, your problem. But it's, I will say that it's interesting to see the different types of developers that Clojure Script attracts because there are those JavaScript devs that have been around the block a few times. They've been writing JavaScript for a long time. JavaScript does allow for some functional paradigms. And so they think functional programming is kind of neat and they appreciate the advantages of writing more expressive code in fewer, more attractive lines. And so, so you see a lot of those JavaScript developers kind of migrate over to our side. And the other main population, and I think I would consider myself one of these, like I said, as the, as, although I've been doing front end longer at this point, but the closure backend dev who suddenly realizes I can do front end. Whoa. Either way, let me tell you, when you start like flying across web apps, it doesn't matter where you launched from. All that matters is that you stole all that power from the browser and you're getting stuff done. So, are you interested? Because if not, you can just turn it off or you can just complain in the comments. Honestly, according to the statistics, most people don't even make it past the first five minutes anyway. So thanks for making it past for five minutes. You get a gold star. Cheers. You're on the frontier of the front end world. There's some things you got to know. You're going to have to deal with some HTML and some CSS. So instead, we can represent HTML as data. Oh, yeah, baby, that's right. Let me show you what I got going on over here. So I started a shadow CGL project and did all the configurations. Took way too long. You don't want to see it. And here I have just a static little web app. I'm going to show you how cool this is. Let's see, let's change this rule number two. Oh, save. Bam, two. Hmm, let's do one solid. I like pink. Let's do indigo, though. And save. Oh, psych, actually. Let's do, let's go back to loop seven. Yeah. And... As you can see, we can use just data structures to render our HTML, which is super cool. Boop and save. All right. We even have a little image here. We have a little counter and the atoms I'm about to talk about kind of help manage that. We can go to, let's see, the state. The state is a little Adam Rooney. Beautiful syntax. We have Weave Jester to thank for that. Oh, we don't want that. We want to get rid of this glass. Bye, Rainbow. Oh, no, psych. I like the rainbow. You get back here, Rainbow. Classy class. Oh, nice. So isn't this just beautiful? I think so. Just to be fair, I'll let you know that this is not the only approach, just the one that I know the best. There are other approaches that includes Sublamo, Hippie, Dami, Rum, Ohm, Quiescent, and there's probably more out there. Just Google is your friend. Hit that Goog. So the other thing that has long since drawn grouchy backend devs even deeper into their servers.
is the obvious need for a mutable state on the front end. Since the front of the application typically kind of revolves around things changing, enter the atom. If you got a fleeting sense of nausea when I mentioned mutable state, you might already be using items on the back end. But hey, you don't have to be scared. An atom is a reference type, just like a ref, and it's just a nice, safe little swaddle for all that yucky immutable state. And as much as we hate on it, mutation is just assignment. You can slap a layer of abstraction on that bad boy and implement an atom as a mutable data structure using assignment functions like swap and update. Kind of similar to how schemers may be familiar with set car or set cooter. And they have those little, little bang boys after let them know it's dangerous. So, have I piqued your attention? But wait a minute, why isn't CLJS more popular? Didn't you just say it was a niche of a niche? Well, yeah, just like any awesome thing, there are a couple drawbacks and I'll go over them. So, First things first, since it is kind of a niche and niche, there aren't as many resources online. And just like Clojure, the tooling can be a little bit tough to figure out. You can do it, I believe in you, if you just read the documentation and play around a little bit. It might take some time, but nothing good comes without hard work. There are also some additional resources that I will always recommend. Purelyfunctional.tv, my man Eric Normand is a saint. He's taught me most of what I know of Clojure and Clojure Script, and his videos on Reframe are especially great. He also has a new book coming out, so you should check that out on Stratified Design. Again, the Clojure Slack in Zulip. The community is small and the community is your friend, especially if you are there just to ask questions. There are more than enough people that want to help others bridge into this community. So, Join the Clojurian Zulip or Slack. The other thing is the Closure Docs. The Closure Docs are really good. I don't know. Try reading them. The Shadow CLJS Docs are really good. Try reading them. The Linegan Docs. Linegan is so easy to use, they don't even need lock docs that are that good. It's that easy to use. To be honest, just like with Emacs, some people are tooling wizards. And then there are the rest of us. We struggle through a couple days of documentation hell to get an okay understanding, set it up once, and then just keep doing the same thing over and over and praying to God that it just still works. <laughs> and it's just like with Git, you don't need to be a wizard to use the tool at a basic level and get the job done. You can also, there are lots of templates and lots of frameworks that'll do most of the heavy lifting for you. Another thing is that if you're coming from a heavy list background, a lot of functional programming stuff that we tend to take for granted is a little different and isn't as advised in especially Clojure Script. And I would even argue Clojure in some instances. In fact, I'd say that writing good Clojure Script requires a little bit of a more skilled hand at the REPL. If you want to know more about how to use the power of the REPL, check out Stu Holloway's talk on REPL driven development. That'll go over it pretty well. But you need to be a little bit better at the REPL because you not only need to keep track of what to render, but you're keeping track of what to render and there's mutable state involved. So for these reasons and more, using traditional functional programming methods from the Old Testament, the Old Testament, as I've been calling it, it doesn't work as well. For example, like passing around functions, higher order functions, or using partial everywhere. And why isn't that? Why doesn't that work? Because you will want to be using your REPL magic introspectable abilities to their greatest advantage. And unfortunately, functions do not play very nice in the REPL when you go to inspect them. Also, another fair warning is always try to return something like false as opposed to nil. 
or just have some good supports in place because JavaScript plays very nicely with nil. And it'll just let you pass it around all willy-nilly and eventually nil will be past something and it'll, it'll blow up and it'll crash and it'll be at a oh, why? Oh my God, this should work. And you'll be debugging for hours and just, just watch, watch out for that landmine. There are a few other little things to get used to. Um, for example, in Hiccup, many of your huggy boy function calls are replaced with hard boys. And I can't get super into it right now, but you can just think of your components more as keywords as opposed to functions. That'll help you get through it a little bit easier. In the end, ClojureScript is gonna be a great fit for some developers and not so much for others. If you're already doing Clojure, even if you consider yourself a back-end dev, it's at least worth a try or a listen. In the next few videos, I'll be drilling even deeper into ClojureScript with a couple of tutorials and interviews. And as always, this channel and myself always open to suggestions. So please comment, message me if you have any ideas, anything you'd like to see, because as I said, some of the documentation or some of the tutorials can be a little bit lean out there. So if there's something you'd like to see, let me know. And if I can do it, I'll do a tutorial for it. So I hope I have earned you smashing that subscribe button. And I hope to see you again.